and then we move on to the monthly reports from the community boards and um, I will start with um, Alexandra Davids, who I assume is online. Um, there we go, there's Alexandra. So if you could um, make your presentation of the Waikura Linwood Central Heathcote Community Board Report. Shall do. Uh, kia ora everyone. Thanks for um, being here or wherever you are this morning. Um, it's great to be able to present and I hope you all had a fantastic um, holiday season. We have a part A in the meeting today and that is item 7 on your agendas and that is for the disposal of land for 203 Alderson Ave. Um, it's a pretty straightforward disposal and the board recommends that the council approve that. It's just an 11 metre squared area and um, that is to formalise the historic use of an existing access track across council land. Um, so that is your part A. Um, and Appar next apparently slide. we're having difficulty with the presentation, oh. Alexandra. So um, it, it's going to be sent out um, to councillors as, um, or she's going to get it on the hub, are you? Or yes, yeah, it, it'll be on the hub <laughs> in just a moment, and then we'll be able awesome. to to follow it, um, you know, on our own screens. But we won't be able to display it. I'm sorry. We'll put we'll no, put it, we'll put it out publicly after the after the um, meetings concluded. Cool. Well, um, just as I go through it, um, just let me know once it's up. And um, as I go through it, I'll just say next slide and then you'll know what you're looking at. I can basically just speak to it anyway. But yep, just no, fire, fire away. So if, if you do that, cool. it'll take us a minute because we'll have to log out and log back in and blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, too easy. I'll start. Thank you. Um, so no worries. So as a board, um, we've noted and we're really thankful for the fact that um, we're seeing more Tadeo street names coming up as options in reports. Um, and the board is where um, the policy has been worked on or is being worked on. And I believe that council um, have had an update on that as well. So um, as a board, we were just um, asking for some advice around that and um, an update. Um, the next slide, which you might see sometime. Um, I just wanted to bring up uh, a few of the issues and the impacts for our communities around the Red Lake traffic system, just around events in our areas. So we have Sundays in the park. Um, as you may know, they have been cancelled up till the 27th of February and um, will be re-evaluated for the final event in that series. Um, these events, next slide. Um, these events, we have, we have obviously. We've, we've got you online now, so um, we, can, we can follow you. Thank you. Cool. So we're next slide now. Um, so these events also obviously affect, thank you, affect the not just people in our communities but um, people from around the city. Um, we also have the community celebration of O Toy Toy that had to be uh, postponed at this stage. So instead of having a large community event that we were supposed to have, we are currently looking at the possibility of having either a first birthday event, which would be pretty awesome, um, or perhaps um, a Christmas event, end of year event for the community. So that's just an update on where that is up to. Um, we have also made the hard decision to cancel our Edible and Sustainable Garden Awards and our Community Pride Garden Awards. Um, we will still have judging for those awards and people will still receive their awards um, that they have won. Um, but obviously we won't be getting together, unfortunately, to present those and have those celebrations. Um, yeah, they will still go ahead, just obviously in a very different way. 
um, next slide please. So we have managed to continue with a few events and um, one of those was our pool party that we had at Pro Toy Toy, so this was for youth. It was a really awesome event. Um, we had obviously controlled numbers and I just really want to say thank you to staff that are working at our facilities um, that are having to manage those numbers and make sure it's safe for everyone. So we are lucky that we can still hold some events at our council facilities. Um, also, we will continue with the opening of Lancaster Park. Um, that is still due to the Anzac Day this year, so that's coming up very soon. Um, there has been a hold up with the memorial gates for that as well, um, technical things. Um, so they will unfortunately not be up and running, but this will be a great opportunity for the community to start making use of an open green space. Um, and really want to thank the Phillips Town Hub for enabling consultation with the community for the future use of Lancaster Park. And again, thank you to the staff for um, being open to listening to what the community wants. So we do still have things going ahead, really excited about um, these events, um, but also mindful of the fact that we are having to cancel a lot um, but that is obviously for the safety of our communities. So that is all from me, keeping it short today on Zoom, but thank you so much. It's great, thank you. Um, any questions? No? Uh, oh. Sorry, I was just wondering that um, it's a shame the memorial gates won't be ready and the timing with Anzac Day, would it be better to wait until they're they're in, they're they're installed to have the opening. Yeah, I thought I think I, we, we, um, it's a board decision. I'm there, just there are some uh, national discussions going on around Anzac Day anyway with the RSA. So I think we should wait until we we know what those discussions produce. It's uh, the, the the events are generally the RSA events rather than community board events. So, um, but this is a community board event. So um, we just I just think we need to to be sensitive to what's going on nationally um, and do what's appropriate. So um, it's it's kind of, it's a wait and see at the moment. I'm just really suggesting that perhaps Anzac Day might not be the best day to have the opening of Lancaster Park. Would have been appropriate if the gates had been ready, I think. But but anyway, I'm just throwing yeah. it in for discussions with, yeah, with we'll the board. It, you might want to reflect on that, Alexandra, I think is, is what um, councillors are saying. Depending on what happens in the next in the next month or so, because um, you, you you would it's it's worse to set up an event and then have to cancel it. Um, yeah. And if it doesn't have to be immediate, and the target is the local community, then then perhaps um, I mean because it would have to be a vaccine pass event, or else it's restricted to twenty five. So um, I don't know if that's been thought through. We can have a discussion around that at our next yeah. meeting. I appreciate that. Thanks, Pauline. Yeah, it's good Good feedback. Thanks very much. All right. No worries. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the Waipapa Papanui Inners Community Board Report. Um, and we've got Emma Norris. And I think, is Simon online as well? Simon Britton? No. Okay. Emma Norris. No, just me today. Kotokoto, thank you for the opportunity to present to you all today. Um, I'm just going to briefly run through a few things that have been going on in our area over the last uh, month or so. Um, first slide, we can change that, um, just outlined a few decisions that we made in our December meetings, um, nothing too major there, it's good to still see some youth development fund applications coming through though. Um, next slide, um, we, our board is a big supporter of the Sticks Living Laboratory Trust and in August last year the Trust signed a deed with the Ministry um, for the Environment to deliver a program of work over the next five years. Um, it's for $4.2 million. Um, the purpose of the grant is to support community-led waterway restoration efforts by employing personnel to, be, to go beyond local government's obligations. Um, and it will enable the trust, the community, and the council to continue enhancing biodiversity values 
and promote opportunities for local community to continue to learn about and be involved in managing the natural freshwater environment. Um, specifically, the project will undertake um, eradication of grey willow from areas along the Puharaki Kanui, the Styx River and its tributaries. Um, we'll see the construction of stock proof fencing, um, more riparian planting, and the establishment of a laboratory field centre and holding nursery, and also increased community engagement. Um, so as I said, our board's been a huge supporter of the Trust uh, since its formation 20 years ago. Um, we're excited to see it entering this new chapter and we'll keep you up, updated on progress as that project continues. Um, next slide. Um, the low noise ash belt um, work has started on the Christchurch Northern Corridor. Um, this is leading to some disruptions for traffic overnight while work's being done. But the new ash belt will hopefully provide some relief to residents who have been impacted by the noise since the motorway opened just over a year ago. Um, it's expected to reduce the noise levels by around five decibels. Mm. So that has started, QE2 Drive has started already, but the actual motorway itself um, is still to come over the next week or two. And the next slide. You may have seen this in the media over the last couple of weeks. Um, we're having, issues, well, residents are having issues in Dudley Street around um, starlings roosting in the huge trees that line the street, um, causing a nuisance for residents with their droppings and causing um, health concerns for those residents. Our board really wants to help find a solution for the residents, um, but there is no real clear path to take. Um, the birds are not native to New Zealand and do not fall under from council management. Um, and apparently pruning the trees would not help. Um, and also we have done, council has done some consultation with these residents on Dudley Street um, towards the end of last year in preparation for a street renewal. And it showed that the residents really, really want the trees to stay in the street. Um, so we'll be discussing this further at our meeting uh, next week. Um, we're hoping for the hope to um, progress the issue um, further, however we can. Um, and that's it from us this week. I was oh, sorry about that. I was just showing the chief executive a, a picture of the um, the footpath uh, underneath where these starlings sit, um, and uh, you know I can I totally get why the um, community are looking for a solution, but it, it does need. It does need to be um, water blasted. Um, I mean, it's just crusted. Um, yeah. There may be work that the university's doing and some overseas studies of areas that have had the same problems. So we'll be looking at other research yes. to see what we can do. But we might possibly look at a bit of a clean up. I, I think a clean up would, would assist. The, I mean, I mean that, that's what I'm, I'm actually hearing from you, Emma, is that the community board would like some sort of um, assistance with, with keeping the area clean while some solutions are found, acknowledging that it's not a it's not a matter that really falls under anyone's area of responsibility. But if it doesn't fall under anyone's area of responsibility, then it's not gonna it's not we're not gonna be finding whether there are solutions out there that other people have looked at. So I'm really appreciative of the fact that and I know the residents will be appreciative of the fact that community boards brought it to our so attention. So is there something that we could move today in that regard. I, I, no, Do you want I, to wait till we've had our we'll meeting? We'll follow it up. Literally, literally the only reason that I was yeah. there is that I, I know one of the neighbours um, and I was visiting her the other day. So, Did she get out um, unscathed? I hadn't realised it was the the footpath. Right. And um, so I, I, I went out on my way out and I took a picture and it's, um, it's caked on the sidewalk. Mm. I'll pick it up with stuff. No, you don't have to pick it Not up. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it just, it, it, <laughs> the chief executive's going to pick it up. Um, there you go, Emma. <laughs> Great to hear. All right, right. With no, the thank you. Um, thank you. Thanks very much. Um, I'll, I'll move on to the uh, next presentation, um, which is the Waihoro uh, Sprayden Kashmir Community Board uh, report. And we have an apology from Carolyn Potter. And so we have Deputy Chair um, Lee Sampson presenting today. Good morning. Um, yeah, good morning from a very damp spread in Kashmir this morning. Um, you're correct, Carolyn, it's an apology today. 
Um, if I could, we've got no parties today, um, so if I could take the reporters red, I'll just move through uh, some of the highlights from the last period, if I can. Yep. If we move slides, um, just in terms of um, recent decisions, we've made a DRF um, allocation to Sydney Junior Cricket Club. That's to a targeted youth programme, so we, we look forward to that paying some dividends. And we've recently made a submission on the council's three water bylaw review, um, particularly um, just noting our concerns around sediment control measures. And um, it's obviously prevalent for spread and Kashmir area. So that's two of our recent decisions. If we could move slide, please. Um, you might recall probably four or five months ago, um, we talked about a feasibility study for adult play. Um, we are... At, we had an interim update um, last week from Jill Borland, who's been procured to do that feasibility study. Um, it appears Carolyn is a bit of a forerunner. Um, we, there is um, genuinely a bit of a groundswell in terms of adult play at the moment. You've got entities like Gap Filler, Sport Canterbury, just looking at um, you know these concepts. Um, and you know we are an aging population, so councils' policies at the moment really do only target youth. And children um, so we've just got to see some changes in that over time so we look forward to the results that we're going to receive next month and um, a couple of the preliminary findings and um, we haven't in spread and Kashmir we haven't got a destination playground what you might say what you might see in the city centre and um, some in the north New Brighton so there could be a space there um, and we just need more inclusive spaces you know to support our aging population so some really some honestly some really interesting initial findings so we look forward to bringing that back to you in, in due time um okay so if, if we move on to the next slide please this is you i think most people from the area will, will spot this roundabout so this is um centaurus road uh, wilson's armstrong ave you've got the convergence of five roads so this is a this is a bit of a legacy issue um You've got a lot of movements happening in this area. You've got the um, St. Martin's School. You've got a new, pro you've got the new kindy there on the northwest corner. Um, you've got a petrol station, a cafe. So you've got so many movements happening here, and it's been a significant concern for the school, particularly obviously with with, with the movements of their pupils, either on on cycles or obviously walking to school. So um, kudos to to Tim. He's been working with the school there. So so thanks to Tim. And staff over the last um, three, four months have been looking at some improvement measures um, that could include um, improving the crossing points, trying to create that more of a slow speed area, and just yeah, just just trying to make that feel a, a far safer environment. It is a legacy issue; it's not a simple fix, but there is measures we can take. So we're going to sound that with the school later this month. So we hopefully, um, as a key stakeholder, they're on board with what we're trying to do there. So um, it is an area we've had a few injuries. We've had three. Um, cyclists um, clashing with the cars. So it is just a complex area and it's something we need to address uh, sooner rather than later. So thank you. Oh, I'm curious to Tony, uh, Tony um, Dakers as well. He's from Traffic Ops, who's been looking at this particular matter for us as well. So thanks, Tony. If we move on. Ah, um, this is um, more work coming out of our um, spread in Kashmir um, age-friendly spread in Kashmir and one of the initial things we found um, through our init initial working group that was we've actually got a lot of things a lot of great things happening on the ground in spread in Kashmir the problem being that we just weren't a lot of people didn't know it about the programs and there's a wealth of things happening but we just weren't connecting people with them so we've produced this um, you know activities and services guide for older adults They've been tremendously pro popular in terms of libraries. I think we're on our second or third print run, so really popular. Um, so it's just a great resource for people in terms of connecting them with activities, um, you know, with support, you know, support and, and information essentially. Um, also, just a card that we've put in there. We'll put in local libraries, maybe GPs. It's just an emergency contact card as well. Just that people can carry on them. So some just more good work coming from age friendly, age friendly spread in Kashmir. Um, I think that's probably me. I've just, if if I may, I think if I've got time, I just want to allude to just a, a current issue that we've got, um, particularly in, in Kashmir and maybe just hugging the hills. 
Um, we've had a, a spate of um, car break-ins hugging the Port Hills. I think you would have seen a little bit in the press, but it, it is genuine. Um, it's not just a perception issue. And it's somewhere where council, you know, community board can take a bit of a leadership. So we've, we're have we sitting down next week with police, um, parks team, other stakeholders to see if we can um, look at some measures there or an action plan. Um, not a simple fix, but there, there might be things that we can do in terms of surveillance, uh, signage, um, maybe more patrols. So it's it's a bit of a move in, in Facebook. We are seeing if we can tackle this issue on a local local issue, maybe sit Ted that we can do in some of these areas. So not not simple, but it's um it's certainly a concern for residents and it's, it's not something that's going away. So just wanted to give you a heads up on that one too. Um that's me in an es essence. Um any any questions? Any questions? No? Oh Pauline to comment just to congratulate you on your focus on the older age group and the different things that you're doing there, including the keeping them healthy with a focus on, on playgrounds but and also the um, the activities and services guide. That booklet, that's awesome. I think all the boards should, should produce one of those. I'm certainly going to suggest that our board look at that. So, um, yeah, you're an inspiration. Thank you. Oh, it's it's the collective board and it's and, and kudos to the actual steering board that we've got working on the the older the age friendly spread in Kashmir. So we've got a nucleus of local people as well as Simon Templeton from Age Concerns. So we've got a nucleus of people working on this, which is, you know, it's it's paying it's paying dividends. Let's say. Thank you very much. That's um that's excellent. Thank you. Right. Thanks for your time today. Have no, a great thank, day. thank you very much. Um. Now, the next one is in person. Um, Tori Peden from the um, Te Pātika Ura Kai Hotu uh, Banks Peninsula Community Board. Kia ora, good morning. Uh, good morning, Mar um, uh, Morena. Uh, just firstly, before I start, uh, much aroha to the Ramsden Fano and friends. Our thoughts are with them all at this time. So, yeah, thank you for that. Right, first slide. Mm. Do you want me to do that here, or do you? Okay. Okay, so the board's last meeting in 2021 was a very full one, and we concluded the year by making several key decisions on a number of items. We requested staff to investigate at the appropriate level and location base of representation on the Horsall Hurutini Drainage Rating District Committee in terms of representation from council staff our community board and the Horsall Hornby Rickerton Community Board. We also asked for more information regarding the stormwater runoff affecting the property at 10 Pages Road in Littleton. Furthermore, we were pleased to approve the HMNZS Steadfast Reserve Landscape Plan and Track Plan um, and also request information related to the Te Reo Māori name for the park. We're happy to approve the location and construction of a sealed car park area and new lookout at the side of the Bellbird. The Summit Road Society will fund and construct the car park and lookout, no cost for council, and will name the lookout the John Jameson Lookout to commemorate the founding of society back in 1948. Uh, the board also happily approved the installation of boulder with commemorative plaque for the Polish settlers in Summer Road Gardens. This plaque commemorates the 150 year anniversary of the Polish settlement. We also approved a grant to the Diamond Harbour Community Association for signage and seating materials and allocated additional money to the Akaroa Resource Collective Trust towards the Anzac Day event coordination for this year's Little River and Akaroa services. Finally, we adapted the board's meeting schedule for 2022 and appointed recess committee. Despite current challenges we face regarding the red traffic light setting, the board is looking forward to continuing the work this year. The uh, board is also pleased to see there appears um, and is close to the completion on the, um, as the summer season gets into full swing and Akaroa seawalls. There appears of cracks, additional rock protection and filling of voids will help ensure protection from future scouring and wave action to keep the path behind the seawall from further slumping. One of our board priorities is for the Banks Peninsula infrastructure to be well maintained and developed as appropriate. 
and another is to enhance the unique beaches. There are a pair of these two seawalls, one of which was constructed in early 1900s, progress both of these priorities, and the board thanks the council for the support in this endeavour. Ah, an exciting one. Um, there is a new mur mural up in Littleton painted by Te Hapo Natifiki artist Hemi Karako. The mural was commissioned by Tapuna Au Aha, Littleton Trust Board, and our board was pleased to support the project with funding from a discretionary response fund. The design is inspired by the Fakatoki or proverb, I walk backwards into the future with my eyes fixed on the past. It represents the people of Waitaha, Kati Māmoi and Kaitahu and includes the weaving of our cultures Māori and Pākehā, encompassed with faith that in knowing our past we will connect successfully in our shared future. The mural celebrates the history of importance of the site as the oldest site of occupation of the Tapuna or ancestors of Tehapu or Natifiki and Whakaropo which dates back to the 15th century. The site is also adjacent to the Pilgrim's Rock and its mural, which celebrates the arrival of Pākehā settlers. With the installation of mural recognition, sorry, recognising the history of Māori in Ohini, Littleton, the space now brings together two stories at one location. It is a wonderful display of the community. And yes, um, many of you will be aware of the um, events that happened on the 15th and 16th of December on the Eastern Bays experienced severe rainfall. This included 77 mils of rain in a five hour stint alone. Uh, that caused numerous significant slips, flooding, scouring and fallen trees. As you can see by the pictures, the resulting damage was extremely extensive. While efforts to clear the damage, remove debris and clear roads and reinstate both temporary and permanent access have been underway for weeks now, there is still significant work needed to restore infrastructure to the eastern bays. These communities are now receiving weekly updates about the progress being made, both, uh, but months of work is still ahead. The board would like to sincerely thank all the people who responded, including the local community, Fulton Hogan, North Canterbury Rural Support Trust, Acro Alliance, and the council staff for all the work they have, that has already been done. So many have gone above and beyond to help our community members during their time of need, and your efforts and contribution has not gone unnoticed and are greatly appreciated. And that is a bit of a wrap up of what's been happening on the peninsula. Thank you very much. Yeah, I've picked up that. Um uh, the, uh, what's occurred in the in the rain before Christmas, you know, in the storm before Christmas, um, the impact on that community and my my mayor's report. So, um, thank you for acknowledging. Thank you for putting up the pictures. I think they are a graphic reminder of the, you know, the extent of the risks that we face in some of the remote locations and how they are just as important to the, you know, to our responsibility as a as a council at, um, as as are the city and. Uh, Sometimes it, when it's at a distance, we don't get to see it. So it's really great that mm. you've... Um, and it just reminds us, I mean, how more often these events are actually happening and how more, more devastating they are becoming. So it is, yeah, it's a stark sure, reminder. I'm pretty sure the West Coast has just gone back yeah. into a state of emergency. Yeah, so <laughs> I did hear I something a, this I morning. I so. ping before yeah. on my phone. It's, so. it's a hard one, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's and it does show how vulnerable we are to um, climate change issues, uh, increased levels of storm frequency and intensity. Um, these are vulnerable communities because they're so easily cut off. And um, you know, um, and I think we, we're going to have to talk about communication with uh, um, the telcos in terms of making sure that that areas like this are not literally cut off from all. Um, forms of communication um, as as many of these were. So I know the rural connectivity groups that are putting in cell towers are working on extra points around the peninsula but they just haven't gone in yet so yeah. it's unfortunate that it is close to happening it just yeah once that comes well, online it will make them more resilient but in the meantime yeah, it was hard. I think we do need to get these images into the 
into the telco so that they are very clear about the reason why. <laughs> yes, yes yeah. sooner rather than later. Yes. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, Yanni? Oh, thank you. Thank you for the update on that. Are, are you aware of any sort of debrief or review in terms of the response? I know there is one being worked on at the moment. Um, I don't know when that's going to happen, but I know that staff are working through a process on, on what has happened. And yeah. we are hopefully going okay. to get the information. Which is all, always happens after an event, yeah, no, so I, thank I you. Know. Yeah, I'm just saying um, the process. Are you yeah, clear about the process to feed that, in? That, 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 that you've heard from the community board chair. Andrew, did you have a...? Um, yeah, I mean, there, there have been some conversations and there is a, a lessons learned um, report being worked on at the moment. We've also signalled to the local community, the affected community, that we want to have a, a really good conversation with the affected people about roles, responsibilities, expectations, what we could have done differently, what we could have done better, and what preparation for what are inevitably going to be more um, events like this and possibly more frequent events like this. Um, so we've, we've certainly signaled that that piece of work needs to land and it needs to feed into a meeting with the community. All right. So, look, thank you very much and, um, you know, thank you for coming in even though you weren't supposed to, but... Um, <laughs> it's, uh, communication is a fine thing. <laughs> that, communication is a fine thing, and that, but that's fine. And, and probably under the circumstances and with um, Peter's passing, it was appropriate that you were here to pass on the condolences of the board. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, now we move to the Waimaito, uh, Fendleton Waimaito, Herewood Community Board. Sorry, and Herewood, sorry. Oh, sorry, I've got to skip past you. Kelly, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, the um, Waitai Coastal Bearwood Community Board. Sorry, I should cross the yes, out as we go through. <laughs> we're still out here. Yep, thank you. <laughs> I know. Uh, good here. morning, Leanne. Good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, an eventful time in the coastal billiard wards. Um, so just decisions made under delegation, now stock and trade. Uh, we made a few decisions around uh, bus stops, uh, yellow lines, mobility parking, et cetera. Um, we've also appointed new coastal city councillor Celeste Donovan to liaise with uh, the various community groups after uh, James Daniels has vacated the role. Um, and also working on the adoption of our 2022 uh, meeting schedule. Um, we're looking to make a couple of little changes if we can to perhaps take a couple of uh, meetings uh, at the very least on the road uh, to try and uh, improve our engagement with the community. Uh, it is worth noting that uh, since we've been live streaming our uh, community board meetings that there's been a significant uh, group of people actually reviewing those meetings. So uh, all helps with engagement. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm going to talk about uh, three buildings, exciting um, things going on in the two wards. Um, uh, but before I do, I just wanted to uh, thank the council staff for front footing uh, preparations for flooding uh, in our area, particularly the coastal ward. Obviously, we've had a few uh, rain events over the years, and it's really good to know that they're sort of front footing those and getting down there with pumps and keeping an eye on the area. And I uh, note that there is also significant work going on in uh, looking at the um, at, at the backflow into the road. So uh, we certainly appreciate that, so thank you. So just focusing on uh, these buildings. So this is the first of them, the All Saints uh, Anglican Church. So they're on New Brighton Road uh, and under the leadership of Carolyn uh, Robertson, they're involved in a, uh, a new development. Um, they bought the old foundry building uh, from the University of Canterbury, uh, where a generation of students um, have partied over the last sort of 10 years or so. Uh, and that uh, that building is is being moved, um, and I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Major for his involvement in that process. Uh, I think brought the two parties together, um, and so yeah, Carolyn's got a wonderful way of engaging with people, and she's um, really looking to uh, have that organisation um, kind of reach out to people in the community. This solves a problem for us um, and the board. We identified early on that uh, Burwood lost community facilities. Um, um, churches and halls etc and so this will be a welcome um, addition to um, to the area and it's going to be a multi-generational facility which uh, which will be good so moving on to the next uh, slide so this is the bridge street hub for those of you um, that aren't aware it's on the corner of estuary road and bridge street in new brighton uh, in south brighton 
uh, so the logo's up and a, uh, a wonderful mural has been done inside uh, by Kyla K, Kyla K Design, who won a uh, community vote. Um, so this is a fantastic example of the community really working together. I remember going to a meeting in, I think, late 2019, where the, uh, the, the board were basically uh, exhausted. They put in a lot of work over a long period of time. Uh, they were wondering where the next dollar would come from. They managed to uh, get in on the shovel-ready funding and I have finished off the facility. It's uh, just the finishing touches are going on now. Um, and they've got, uh, at their latest AGM, they uh, had a whole lot of new blood into the board. And uh, look, I mean, uh, it's a really, really positive thing for the area. And, uh, and I think it's going to be a real heart of uh, the South Brighton um, community. So moving along to the... Uh, the last building, which is the Ascot Community Centre. This is this was the old clubhouse for the Ascot Golf Course, uh, which has been uh, refurbished and is uh, various community groups are being wrangled by Eastern Community Sports. Um, and um, yeah, so there's been quite a bit of work inside and outside of the car park, etc., uh, bringing this up to speed. And it's a very welcome addition to uh, to the area. It's a few hundred metres from QE2. Uh, and you'll be pleased to know that uh, they've finally put in some uh, little sliding doors there that uh, stop the children, elderly and disabled people from freezing as they come out of the pool at QE2. So we're really stoked about that. So thank you. Uh, that occurred during the maintenance, which was uh, done uh, when they closed the pools for a couple of weeks. And then last, I just wanted to bring up the last slide. So um, obviously there's been a bit of a weather event on uh, the West Coast, which is probably going to affect the coast to coast because it finishes in your Brighton now. And if you look at that central, central photo, you see that they truck some sand in um, and put it on the steps um, there uh, leading up to the um, memorial. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, zone. Obviously that photo was taken in better days when uh, we weren't under COVID restrictions. So. Uh, this event, which brings uh, a thousand people and a bit of a traveling circus who travel from uh, uh, Kamara in the west coast over to Christchurch and, and the finish in New Brighton. Um, the two day event has been cancelled this year, but the one day event is uh, going to go to go ahead in some capacity. Uh, and we look forward to welcoming them on uh, Saturday. Um, I'm actually going over with my wife to support our eldest son who's uh, doing the event. I'm, I don't know whether they'll be kayaking the river or going over the regular run, but uh, in some capacity, I'm sure they will uh, get to finish. So kudos to the um, to the organisers who've uh, worked really hard to make sure that this event goes ahead in some capacity. Um, that's all I have for you. So thank you. Any questions? Very good. So are there any questions from councillors? Uh, Pauline. Sorry. Um, Kelly, I just wanted to thank you for another really good presentation. It's really awesome see so much good stuff happening there as usual. Does the spate of burglaries, burglaries we've been having in these containers, particularly in the um, Richmond area, the Revolution, which I think that part's your ward, isn't it? Do you know much about that? They've been targeting the containers and taking the, um, it's about $20,000 worth of community garden tools and power tools and all sorts of things. Are you aware of that? Yeah, I did read about that in the media. I don't think that's in our area. I mean, we certainly have our own. We certainly have our own issues, uh, you know, uh, with burglaries, um, you know, tradies vans and things yeah. like that. I think it's like a city-wide uh, issue. I know uh, I've seen on various community Facebook pages that uh, there will even be photos of people and and, and surveillance camera footage of. Uh, of people in um, places where they shouldn't be taking things that they, that aren't theirs. Um, and it does seem to be a, a real issue at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what the answer is. Um, no, it's okay. Maybe more community patrols, but yeah. Yeah, it was probably more of a question for Alex. It was her ward, I think, that. And I think it might be um, one in the Innes ward too, the, um, the tool lending container. But I think it's just a call out to be vigilant and ask our residents to be super vigilant because... This is affecting community groups who are trying to do things on a shoestring on a voluntary basis, and it's just tragic. Thank you. All right, anyone else? No? Well, yeah, thank you, Kelly, for, for an excellent report. I, I do hope the coast to coast isn't affected by the, well, what remains of the coast to coast isn't affected. So um, good luck on Saturday. Um, thank you. 
Right, so the next one is Waimato, Fendleton Waimato Harewood Community Board um, with Bridget um, Williams introducing yes. the report. Yes, thank you. Yeah, hi there. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa. So thank you for giving us the opportunity to um, present on what the board has been up to. Um, it is going to be quite a, a short and sweet report. Um, I'm conscious, yeah, you've got... Um, yeah, a lot to get through. So I'll just start with the decisions made under delegation. So as you can see, there are quite a few and they're wide ranging, um, you know, consisting of um, approving the release of the Rurukahatu Reserve Management Plan, which we'll talk about soon. Um, a, a few stopping, no stopping restrictions, um, the approving of granting an easement, um, and also other uh, DRF funding as well. So quite straightforward there. And moving on to the next slide. Perfect, thank you. So this here is, um, yeah, the lakes at Rotokahatu Reserve are no longer our best kept secret. Uh, they are now visited by thousands of people from across the city. And going forward, it's really important that we can meet the needs and provide safe facilities for the local user groups and the public. And at the same time, protect the natural environment and the many species who make this area their home. So there is a drop-in session on site next Tuesday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. for people to speak directly to staff about the plan. And our board is looking forward to hearing back the feedback from the community when the plan comes back to us for approval. And I want to also acknowledge all the staff that have been behind this. This has been a, um, a long journey, so it's really exciting that it's now at this stage. Moving on to the next slide. So you've heard me talk before about our safety initiative in the Avonhead Rustley area. And part of the project was to hold some public information sessions, but due to COVID restrictions, we have pushed these sessions back until later in the year. So in the interim, we have worked alongside the creative media group from Christchurch Community Church and developed a short video to share the results from the survey and highlight the various support services available. So we were going to share this video with you today, but due to time constraints, we will save this for another time, but it is a great video. So, um, so when it is out there, I do recommend you take it um, yeah, check it out. So the video will be shared through various social media apps and there will be a link on the council's website. We will also send the link to the video out to all those who participated in the survey, as well as to the local schools and local and through local newsletters as well. And once again, I want to acknowledge that this has been a really wonderful project and a great illustration of community and stakeholders coming together to create a really positive uh, initiative and just the process of the video um, it being done through the Christchurch Community Church was just another great way to highlight that interconnection of different community areas. And then moving on to the last slide. So yeah we were very disappointed to have to make the call to cancel this year's Culture Galore event. We know that this annual event is a highlight for many groups and residents, but under the current COVID restrictions, it was not able to um, proceed. And we want to acknowledge all of the work that staff and local groups had already put in towards organising this year's event. And we do look forward, though, to hosting the event next year. <laughs> so that's our report. And thank you so much for listening and happy to take any questions. Very good. Do I have um, any questions from anyone? Um, Aaron. Yeah, Bridget, just on the consultation out at the lake, is there any um, chance of that day being moved to whichever is going to be the warmest of next week? <laughs> or just the Tuesday? No, no, no. I think Tuesday's peaking at I, 17. I was just, re just relying on, um, relying on <laughs> weather forecasts for yeah. setting yeah. meeting dates. Is well, because well, well, the place changes. It's a dramatic no, I, change. I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, every degree if you, it changes. If, if you can look at the forecast ahead Friday's and 23 next week and Tuesday's 17. So that's a big difference in swimming. Yeah. I mean, the crowd yeah. would be fivefold. That's the difference. Yeah. But, no, I, um, I acknowledge that, Aaron. Look, I, I'll, I'll pass that on to staff to see if that's something that does have wiggle room. Um, obviously, um, 
you know, next Tuesday's coming around pretty close. Uh, but yeah, maybe yeah. we could, yeah, we could see what that flexibility looks like. So yeah, yeah. I'll pass it on. Yeah, 17 is not that warm for the middle of summer. So yeah. it'll be no, 23 is real good. <laughs> we, of course, are all gutted about culture galore. So um, just thought I'd say that. And yeah, uh, kia ora, Bridget. Thank you. Just um, a couple of questions about your community safety survey. Who developed mm. it and how did you get it out into the community? Yeah, so the, um, the so we had it was like a collaborative effort. So um, it was our staff that uh, developed the survey, but it, we actually created a committee of uh, you know of stakeholders to be involved in it. So that ranged from um, Sarah Pallet to also um, uh, the community uh, patrol and also um, the. Uh, Oh, what was the other one? Um, neighbourhood support. And then we also had a few members of our own community board. So Sam McDonald and Mike Wall and myself were also quite active in it. So in terms of you know how we came how we came up with the questions, it was a collaborative thing. Uh, but then getting it out there, that was done through um, through staff, but also we could um, push it in our own you know, through our own channels too. And we had, uh, where people wanted to, you know, come by and, and drop in their surveys, we actually collaborated with the men's shed where they had like made a little letterbox drop at the, um, you know, at the local service centre. So it was a real example of doing it in a collaborative way so we could spread the message out as far and wide to get back as much feedback as we could. That sounds amazing. And what sort of response did you get? How many response responses? Uh, the response was really, I want it, I'm going to be picking like a statistic out of the air, but I want to say it was around like 25% response rate, which is actually really high. Um, and the response had been really, really positive. But we've got all of that information and that data in the video. So once the video is finalized, then yeah, we can, we can yeah. definitely send that through to you so you can see the stats. Thank you very Bridget, much and Bridget, well done. Just the other one on that is, and it'll be really useful. We're hoping it's going to be released on Friday, um, and it talks. It literally talks through some of the issues that have been identified in the community, and then we're going to run it run through with John Price as well, um, because half of it was about making the community aware, but getting them to report it rather than putting it on Facebook, um, so that they can target resources into the community. So yeah. we'll make sure that that video is circulated because it'll go up on the council Facebook and, and the like. So um, I mean. We we could we could play it today after the all of the things if if we could be sent the link. Um, if yeah. It's, if it's ready to go, they we, were doing some. It's actually Sam Yao's boy doing it. Uh, oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Justin. He, yes, yeah. yeah. So he they literally they're tweaking a few edits, but it'll be ready Friday. So we could just circulate right. it if that's okay. It's okay. about five but, minutes. But I would so. like it played at the council meeting. We'll definitely do it at the next it, community board one. Yeah. If that's okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. Cool. So, th th thank you very much, Bridget. It sounds really exciting, and it, and it's an, an amazing initiative. And I think what you'll find is that other community boards, as you know, I, good ideas like this are brought up. They'll, they'll it'll it'll um, you know, it'll and there was spread. Yeah. yeah. And the good thing about it was there's really minimal cost. So yeah. we did the the flyer drops and the like. I mean, there's obviously a bit of staff time that goes into it, but because we managed to engage a heap of different community groups, yeah. it's been really, really effective and will help communicate with the community. So, yeah, we'll, we'll circulate it as soon as we get it. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Thanks very Thank much. You. That great presentation, Bridget. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Waipuna Halls will Hornby Rickerton Community Board. Uh, we've got an apology from Mike Moore today, so we have Deputy Chair Helen Broughton. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Right, thank you. Um, now, I, are you wanting me to touch on again this issue of the Upper Rickerton Library? Oh, it's coming up, good. Um, there's a part A recommendation. Yes, yes you're, you're perfectly um, and it's fine to the raise library. It. Yeah. Sorry? Yes, no, it's fine to talk to the, to the part A to, recommendation. We would value, okay, good, thank we you. Would value hearing okay. from you on the subject. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's it's basically council land with a lease to the Upper Rickerton Library Trust. They've operated as a library for a, a very long time, 
But after the earthquake, um, it was found about 2017 that the building wasn't safe. And a council report was done but by an engineer and the building has to be demolished. The trust hasn't got the capacity to fund that. So in the, the recommendations, there's a request for council to in fact demolish the building and pay that cost. The trust is being wound up and they're very sad about this, but um, there's been no other option. Um, now there's a difference, a slight difference between what the board is recommending and what the staff earlier recommended. And we support all of the recommendations from the staff other than, other than that we proceed to sell the land. And the board is asking council to have a look if it could be a reserve of some sort, recognising the Memorial Trust, which was given by Sir John McKenzie as a memorial for the First and Second War soldiers. So what we'd like to do is for staff to look further at having this as a sort of place of remembrance. And um, I think there's no advantage in selling it because it's crown derived land and the money would go back to the crown. So just to give the context of this area, it's on Rickerton Road. It's in the upper Bushin area. The area is very busy with many, many Chinese and other ethnic restaurants. There's a terrible car parking situation there. And surrounding this area in terms of residential living, it's largely small units with one or two people and not much land around those units. So it would be particularly good, I think, to have this as a quiet place where people can reflect and, and meet friends. So we're just putting, and I understand the staff are looking further at this, but we support all the other recommendations and we took out the one recommendation where the staff wanted to proceed to sale. So that's there, so that's gone from our recommendations. So we're fully happy with, with what's currently there. Uh, any, yes, I can, any questions or? Oh no, um, have, oh look, okay, I'll let, I'll, let, I'll let some questions go, but um, really I'd not like to spend a lot of time on this. We're gonna deal with it as a part A shortly. So if it's a question that must be asked by, to the deputy chair of the community board, then that would be acceptable. Yeah, if I may? Yep. Uh, um, you may not be able to answer this right now, but it's something we could take forward. But if the council decided to retain the land and as a, as a some sort of memorial, um, would the trust consider staying on and perhaps taking over the maintenance of that? And that might be something that we build into a resolution and take forward. But would you have an opinion, Helen, or if they actually decided yes. to firmly wind up? I think that, that they're quite elderly, and I think they haven't got the energy anymore to to actually continue. They were quite distressed finding the building was actually unsafe, but I think to go further on with it would would be impossible. Oh, sorry, the, the trust has already wound up, so that's a um, it is a redundant question. So uh, thank thanks very much, but that is not to say that we won't honour um, their service uh, to our. To our community in some way, um, either. Um, th but they have wound the trust up. So, uh, so would you like to move on to the rest of your presentation? Yes. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Now I'm dependent on on Emma here. Um, I can probably just let that one pass, that that particular one, and we've we've got three specific items. Uh, we're seeking proposals from the Yorthurst Memorial Hall um, to see if there's any inter interested party who is willing to repair and strengthen the building so it can be put to use again. Um, a review panel has had submissions and the panel is made up of staff and they will come back to the board with, with, with a recommendation. 
the next one. I'll be as quick as I can. Uh, <clears throat> we have had difficulties in Waikola Park with vandalism. Uh, the EPIC Sports Project, Faranui Gators and Community Development Network Trust partnered together to activate Waikola Park uh, and the, the new programs have been a success and there's been less antisocial behaviour. And next one, please. Uh, now, <clears throat> this is a private plan change, which has been on the cards for 10 years. It was an exemplar at Netherlands. Uh, we've received an application for a proposed private change plan change to the Netherlands exemplar. We've had consultation. The board submitted on the proposal and the further submissions until, until January 2022. Basically, it's somewhat disappointing, though we have to accept it, that the developer is no longer proceeding with an exemplar project. He's now doing a project that fits in with the residential new neighbourhood zoning. So it's less spacious and less, less different, if you like. So that's just, it was always seen as a very special project, which has now become a sort of standard project. And that's it. Thank you. Right, okay, thank you very much um, for that. Um, I've noticed that um, Yanni has a question and so does Jimmy Chen. Thank you. Just, just on that last point, um, mm. so, I mean, that's pretty disappointing. I think we gave special planning permission for that project. Do you, so is, is it just going through a completely separate planning process now? With the yes, it's plans? going, to, because they had planning permission, and they're going back to a standard form of development, um, they've got to put in a proposed private plan change. Yeah. Which is just tweaking. I mean, we find it somewhat disappointing too, but I think I, I think we have to accept it. This has been on the card, on, on the box for 10 years, and I don't, I'm not sure if people have changed, the company's changed, or it's not feasible. But the, they're certainly now going back to a, a standard subdivision development. Given that this was a decision that I believe went through council originally, are we going to get, I guess it's a question for the staff, are we going to get updated on what's... On yes, what's we will. Yeah, I think that would be helpful to understand it. Thank you. Thank I you. think we already heard, but um, I'm sure we can do that again. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Helen, regarding to the Yorkers Memorial Hall, I just want mm -hmm. to know, because this uh, exploration interest has been uh, commenced, uh, back to mid of November for four weeks. And that's before the public mid don't December should be done, you know. I just want to know what's the time frame the office can present to the community board or whether it's presented to the council as well or not. No, I think it comes back to the board. I have no idea on the time frame, but I would think late late February. But that's that's just an estimate on my part sorry if if yeah I assist you um this was a late proposal that did come in um so we've extended the period till march uh, we're going back to the oh, board okay. for discussions in march right thank you thank you um aaron just uh, a question around the uh, memorial hall at Yaldhurst. Does that only go to their community board or does it come to our one as well? Because it's on the boundary, literally, and more of the residents actually live in our ward than live in theirs. I, I don't know the answer to that. Is, does, is anyone else able to help with that? Seeing if John can come down. Bruce is up. The, yeah, I, th I think I think it should come back to affect both boards actually, yeah. as, as Aaron's raised it. Yeah, the final decision is councils. It needs to come back to council from the original resolution, um, but we can make sure that information is supplied to both boards. 
Okay, and also before um, any decisions are made on that in that information, there really needs to be a tour of councillors to see inside that building. It's an incredible example of 1950s architecture, and I think before they decide to write it off, they need to see what's there for themselves. Some of us, a couple of us have been, obviously Jimmy and I, because it's in our wards, but everyone else needs to see it before we write it off. Thank you. Look, if it was, would assist the councillors in making their decision, um, we can arrange that, but I'm also not sure that that assumption that we're writing it off is quite right, given we've requested proposals from the community and we're still to even consider those proposals. Bruce, is there any reason why um, the neighbouring community board couldn't be engaged in the issue? Uh, absolutely. We're happy to make that happen. Right. So, I mean, ultimately any decision comes back here, but it, um, I'm, I'm hearing what um, Aaron's raising, which is that it is right on the cusp, and it's particularly his mm. ward, so um, mm. it would be sensible to include both. Yep. Yes, and that's finally in, so... Thank you. OK. All right. Anything else? No? Oh, Jimmy, one other thing. Sorry? No? Regarding the earlier... No, not at this stage. Um, we well. The the I haven't got a res mover of the resolution yet, so I haven't moved on to any debate. Okay, oh, not yet. Okay. No, we're yeah. not. We're not. We don't debate them one by one. We debate them as a whole. If we need to debate anything. Sure. That might invite others to do the same. So there you go. Um, all right, so thank you, Helen, very much thank for you. your presentation today. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank and, you. Um, so um, could I have a mover for the receiving of the reports? That's moved by Jake, seconded by Sarah. Um, is there any debate? Jimmy Chen. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, I do appreciate the, the, the Helen on behalf of the Hostel Rest and uh, Hostel Hongbei and the Rick and the Community board presented this one. This one probably is some, one of the most, uh, you know, the positive, active uh, the, the the report. Particularly highlight some of the items, uh, like uh, uh, the the report particular emphasize to activate Waikola Park in response to the anti-social behavior. This, uh, my understanding, council officer. You know, and uh, a community board and working together as a partnership with all those that uh, are the epic sports project, uh, CDN Trust and the uh, Vatanui Gators to convert to change all those uh, misbehavior, antisocial, the teenagers is more positive. But they 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 are you know the dedicate themselves and uh, all working together closely. That's well done. We need to acknowledge you know. They're the uh, greater contribution. The other one is uh, also the, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the CDN Trust for the past uh, 25 years, their long-term com commitment and greater contribution to the, the, the community, particularly for perfecting all those teenagers and the young people and also encourage more, you know, to be perfected a teenager, to be a youth workers. You, you, you know, because like, like uh, Mitch Shaw, he received the, the Westview the Local Hero Award. This kind of is very, very good uh, pattern, good model for us. So I would like to take this opportunity, particular to acknowledge them. Thank you. Excellent. All right. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That is carried. Thank you very much.